Hey YouTube, good morning. I'm just gonna go out here and do a quick drive today. And the purpose of this drive isn't really to test anything. I'm gonna do the Memorial Park route, but it's just to have a, uh, a conversation about some things Elon said during the David Faber interview and specifically around the point of Tesla FSD having its chat GPT moment. I think that was a very interesting analogy and I liked the analogy because it's a little insightful and I don't necessarily think everyone heard it the same way I heard it and the way I think about FSD and the way I think about chat GPT. So yeah, let's get into it a little bit. So for those of you that are not familiar with chat GPT, it is a relatively new product that is created uh, by OpenAI, and OpenAI is a company that Elon basically helped found uh, with a donation, and he said it was on the order of magnitude of $50 million to get it started. Um, but he basically parted ways with it for various reasons, and uh, there's a lot of other information about why he's no longer part of OpenAI. Um, but they put out a product called ChatGPT and some other add-ons and APIs and, and things like that that people are able to play with. And what it really does is open up a large language model to everyone on the planet. Uh, you can use it for free if you want to use up to uh, the 3.5 version of ChatGPT. If you want access to the latest large language model, which is ChatGPT4, you have to sign up for the, uh, the Plus version, which is $20 a month. I highly recommend trying the Plus version if you do anything with code or uh, want a little bit more better semantics. And maybe you just try it for one month and cancel it if, if, if money is the issue. But you ought to at least be aware of the difference between ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4. I'm just giving this background because I highly encourage everyone to at least be able to understand what it is when we're talking about chat GPT because in order to have and understand what a chat GPT moment is you sort of have to have used it just watching the the mainstream media or the newsreels about it you're, you're not going to get the same impressions um, that I think you need in order to understand the argument that I'm getting ready to make so Probably the first time I tried using it, you know, I, I did some standard prompts and put some things in chat GPT and I was kind of blown away with the, um, and I just got to pay attention to the road, even though I'm looking straight ahead, uh, not enough tension anyway. And I think that, um, it, it kind of blew me away with the context and the, and, and the, and the human like responses it gave. Um, it wasn't perfect in many realms. You can kind of trick it to make stuff up. And I think I've even heard the term hallucinations being used for when it generates content in order to fill out its response, even though it's completely bogus and, and made up content. I'm going to edit my route here. Um, so I think that the chat GPT moment that Elon referred to and that the world is going through right now is this kind of oh wow moment it actually is useful uh, kind of an argument you know AI and these large language models have been around for for decades and have gotten really good over the last few years but the chat GPT moment that everyone's going through is kind of this oh wow I can use it and I'm not even into AI maybe it was the fact that it was made public and it just cost a little bit of money or used for free on a website with OpenAI. Maybe that's the reason everyone's using it and it's, it's not kind of hidden away uh, and everybody can play with it. Um, you know, people like, you know, in my family and my coworkers, people that are not very technical, when I show them how to use it and they go use it for themselves, they kind of have this oh wow moment. But every time I, I talk to someone about it, I do kind of have to caveat it and explain the things that ChatGPT does that isn't perfect, you know? Have to show them how it can make up book references that don't exist, of authors that don't exist. Or it can, you know, kind of lie to you a little bit, but not maliciously, but just in order to please its, you know, large language model algorithm of, of filling out the next word, sometimes it makes stuff up. Um, you can even ask it if what it just responded is accurate and it actually has enough context sometimes to know if what it said was accurate. But in the f 
okay i'm going through a traffic circle here and just kind of paying a little bit more attention instead of talking and okay it butted out in front of that car which was not good and i had to tap the accelerator there that was a situation where it should have had more patience and it didn't um so to continue the conversation um so i think that knowing that chat gpt isn't perfect and that you do need to use it as a user and, and kind of be aware of its flaws is an important part of chat gpt right chat gpt is not agi uh, which is artificial general intelligence with self-learning and capabilities but it is it is amazingly capable um so i'm going through this argument to talk about chat gpt because you know while it is amazing and while it has flaws to say fsd is going to have its chat gpt moment if you're going to use that same analogy you can also use the analogy that it still has flaws and it's not agi and not completely ready to be a robo taxi so with the analogy of fsd will have its chat gpt moment i think we are very close to fsd having its chat gpt moment in that same context that chat gpt is not perfect and needs to be watched and edited fsd is not perfect and needs to be watched and have a driver in the seat and needs to be monitored but the utility of fsd is getting very very close to putting people in the car and watch it and they're going to go oh wow it does that i did i had no idea I had no idea they'd come this far. But those are the people that don't know, that aren't driving it out here every single day like me. This FSD moment is very, very close. Now I say that because I drive FSD a lot and I think it is very, very good. But I also know exactly where its flaws are and I know how to pay attention much, much closer when I expect it to give me some bad information or a bad uh, outcome just like chat gpt i trust it for some things but i know kind of exactly where i can look for the flaws that it might introduce when chat gpt becomes agi or evolves into an agi that now it stopped here for no oh i'm sorry here i am talking too much and i need to change my destination again um look at me i'm getting carried away everybody um I, I think FSD being a robo taxi is a little closer to chat GPT becoming an AGI. Um, and we're not there yet. And I think this analogy holds water. But when Elon says, you know, FSD is, is going to have its chat GPT moment and maybe later this year or next year, I kind of agree with that. Using the analogy I've kind of outlaid here uh, for what chat GPT is today and what FSD is today. I love driving with FSD. I am much safer driving with it than without it. Uh, but I know very closely where it has issues and I just pay a little bit more attention and I'm a little bit more of an active driver in those situations. Um, and in some areas, it really, really is better than me because of its camera uh, 360 degree view. There's flaws with that. And those of you that have been following my conversations for a long time know I feel that the creeping behavior in order to get visibility with obstructions is a little inferior uh, to the human. Uh, they could make it superhuman by adding additional cameras. To this point, they have not done that. You know, I think we do know we have a radar coming, but we're not exactly sure how that's going to help give lateral visibility um, in the future. But that's where we are and this is the hardware. So there's a balance for a mass produced car to manage cost, to manage you know, the software and to uh, add only the sensors that are required. Right now, this is the sensor suite we're using and the FSD team, uh, a little shout out to them again, is doing an amazing job iterating the software. Um, neural networks at the complexity that they are developing are hard for most of us to understand probably a lot like the chat GPT neural networks for the large language models and the number of nodes and weights that they've put into that algorithm is is almost impossible to comprehend um, for those of us just using it casually it truly is a black box where we put something in and something comes out and even the experts are at times baffled by how it did what it did but that is the nature of a neural network finding its solution based on weights that it has been trained on but make, make no mistake, it has to be trained in order to do that. There is not 
any self-supervised learning going on yet, uh, that is when we will cross this threshold of the AI being able to teach itself at a rate much, much faster than our own training uh, systems and data sets. So anyway, that's the conversation I wanted to have. I wanted to have the conversation, and this is me nudging it to make a right on red a little bit more um, relevant because I have cars behind me. You know, that's the conversation I think that should be had about where FSD is. Recognize it for what it is. Make analogies to other things you use in your life so that you can talk to others and show others what it can do. Uh, but don't expect too much of it. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. I imagine this conversation will probably get uh, not a whole lot of views because it's not on a subject that a lot of people are, you know, watch my content for. But this is my office for FSD. I got the cameras rolling and I'm talking to myself, but hopefully some of this resonates with each of you that uh, chose to watch this video. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you soon.